Were you surprised by President Biden's declaration last night to CNN's Aaron Burnett that he's cutting off not merely the precision guided munitions, but also artillery ammunition? Well, I'm certainly disappointed. I can't say I'm entirely surprised, but obviously this flies in the face of overwhelming bipartisan support for Israel's fight for its very existence. And this idea that somehow President Biden can micromanage uh, this conflict uh, from thousands of miles away is just beyond ridicule. So um, I hope he reconsiders. Certainly, they're going to get a lot of backlash from people like me and others in Congress who believe we, we need to stand by Israel in its time of need. Leader McConnell and Speaker Johnson sent a letter yesterday before the president's interview. You served with the president. Do you think he knows what he is doing on this in terms of Sinwar and what the people, the innocent people of Rafa are now going to be subjected to because of his decision? Well, I can't help but think of Bob Gates' quote about uh, Joe Biden has a perfect record when it comes to national security and foreign affairs matters. He's been wrong 100 percent of the time. And, you know, he's nothing if not consistent. But can you imagine that when we were fighting to root Mosul, uh, the ISIS out of Mosul or Al Qaeda out of Fallujah, that one of our allies would say, well, we don't quite like the way you're doing this. Uh, we would have laughed at them. We would have said, this is not your business. We're going to take care of our business. So I just think it's, um, like I said, beyond parody. Yesterday before the interview, Senator Chris Coons was trying to do some cleanup on aisle three, saying, ah, look, listen, Secretary Austin said it's ambiguous. We're not really sure what's going to happen. I don't think it's ambiguous at all right now. And I know that the Israeli war cabinet meets today. What is your advice to Israeli uh, decision makers about proceeding in Rafa or not proceeding in Rafa? My advice is ignore, ignore Joe Biden. Do what you need to do to uh, save your country and to uh, eliminate this uh, terrorist uh, safe haven in, in Rafa. I agree with that. Do you think that's what Israel will do? You know, I, I'm, I'm, it's hard to, hard to know, hard to guess. But, you know, I just think that uh, hopefully uh, more, uh, uh, more dependable, more wiser heads will prevail in the, uh, in the circle that surrounds the president. You know, these days, I don't know how much he's in control of his own policies or whether he's just a mouthpiece for those uh, from some of his uh, more progressive staff. I think you are correct. Uh, Senator, I, I don't know if you had enough time yet to talk sure. to any of your Democratic colleagues, but has anyone expressed surprise to you on the other side of the aisle? Because I'm actually shocked that he said this out loud. I'm not sure they were prepared for him to say it out loud. I'm sure they weren't prepared. Um, again, you, know, you saw the overwhelming vote in the National Security Supplemental for Israel, Ukraine, and, uh, and the Indo-Pacific. And um, this, this is in complete defiance, really, of the will of Congress and actually what the president asked us for. And now to say he's going to somehow ration uh, these weapons to Israel in this fight for its very existence. This is not, this is not an opportunistic conflict from the standpoint of, you know, Israel picking a fight with Hamas or Iran. Don't forget, and I know you don't, but the enormous swarm of drones and missiles that rained down in retaliation uh, on Israel that fortunately they were able to defeat with our help and the help of other allies. This is a war for Israel's very existence, and uh, we should not be playing around with it. And certainly the president should not be uh, trying to parse out weapons that uh, Israel needs to eliminate this terrorist stronghold. Last question, Senator Cornyn. The Biden doctrine after Afghanistan, the halting support of Ukraine early on, and now the turn against Israel, seems to be never don't disappoint your allies, never don't let them down. Am I being unfair? No. The, um, the most common statement I hear of, uh, of Biden's uh, national security policy is, is your friend's don't trust you and your enemies don't fear you. And I think that's, that's the case.